There we go. Apparently, I was logged in. Recording has begun, and live transcription has begun. Welcome to the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion meeting for April 27th, 2022. Um, on our agenda today uh, it is just Google season of docs first. So for, we got the deadline of May 4th. And Matt, I think you did take care, it's, I think you took care of the whole application process for this one. So we're ready to handle large volumes should those occur. Yeah, one question that came up in Slack, is there no um, application like portal at Google? Sean, do you know this? It's um, a good question. I The way that, you know, yeah. um, Season of Code has an application portal and then yeah. students have to apply. Yeah, let me but I guess for you, it's, it's kind of a question, yeah, like what is our, what do we need to do? No. So we, Um, there's an organization administrator's guide within which the application phase. So it says submit the application form by the application deadline. That's for the organization. So this is, yeah. I'm talking about students. Yeah. So. All right, so it yeah. maybe I should okay, investigate yeah. this a little bit. Okay, yeah, so you're not um, sure. I'm not sure. No. Um, what is okay, it? Say then, a statement of interest. Where's see that under four technical writers? Yes. Is that maybe it? Okay, they work directly with technical writers. So this is what people should include in their personal statement. And there's a writer's guide. But I think it looks like we handle all the applications directly. There is not a process within Google that I see. Um, <clears throat> just Okay, so then let's say that, and you, hold on. I'll put this link in the meeting minutes as well. So then once we get the applications, Sean, do you, you've been working on. I'm working on the funding part. So how do we signal that to Google that we need whatever $10,000? Um, you know? I, I actually just apply for that by May something, May 12th, I believe is the deadline, but I'm going to do it this week. Cause... Well, you can't do it until we select the people that we want. Oh, is that true? Okay. I believe yeah. you. Now, like I've read, yeah. I've, yeah. I've, I read it, but it was a long time ago when I created the application. Okay. Maybe I need to do a little, it sounds like we have a process thing. So maybe I, I'll do a little reading. Don't apply for any money until okay. I go through it in more detail. Okay. All right. Yeah. My, okay. Fair enough. I have a question about that date. Um, how do we want to, I know we put it in the Google Season of Docs Slack channel. Do you want me to yep. also put that somewhere else to get it yeah. out? Yeah, tweeting it out is probably a good idea. Okay, and maybe um, we can put that in the newsletter in the community meeting, um, but I didn't know if like, I mean, yeah. that's kind of, kind of close, so I don't know. Before yeah, then. maybe just the, maybe email yeah. as well. Like no, we do. Channel. Yeah, we need to set up the the cult the I need to do the open collective part by May 12th and then um, we hire the May we have we have to hire the technical person by May 16th and after we've completed that one we email I email address uh, I'll see the first email will be sent once the technical writer has been hired starting on June 9th and we must start, submit our expense for this 
email, by email by June 23rd. And then the second one has to be submitted by June 21st or December 21st. So I do know also that we, we don't have, it is November 26th is the last date that people can work in. So we can be open to different timelines or cycles of work with this program as long as the work is completed by November 26th. That date is okay. burned in my memory from the application. Okay, so help me understand. So we we take applications through May 4th on yes. our own repository. Yep. Okay. And then we will meet as a group to decide how many if and how many technical writers we would like to hire. Right. We have funding for one right okay. now, right? Is that right? Uh no, I think we have funding potentially for three. Okay. okay. But and then you email Google and say that we're hiring somebody, so please put yep. money into our open selective account. Yeah, so thing one, make sure that the open collective account is set up by May 12th. Thing two, by May 16th, I fill out this proof of technical writer hiring form. Um And that's, I presume, you know, here we are. So I just have to fill out this form and submit it by that date. And then after I've done those steps, I, uh, the email address linked to the Open Collective Profile will receive two email notifications. And the first will be sent once the writer's been hired starting June 9th. And we get 40% of the money at that point. So, e so an email address linked to your open collective profile. So, so that would be the probably the outdoors one. Um, after you created the yeah. email address linked to your open collective, we'll receive two emails. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then Google puts the money into our open collective account, however that happens. Magically. And then, yep. and then we distribute those so, funds to the technical writer. Correct. And I, I assume since you've been the one who has done the disbursements from our open collective account previously. So I'm assuming I, I can do it. I think it's with easy. The, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's those are the things that need to happen. This is like this is the document that um, needs to be followed. OK, so we you just that blue bar, that blue button proof. Of yep. second, so that you just we need to make a decision. Like, I think the decision, if we have the applications by May 4th, the hope is, is that we can have them done by the 11th. You know I, what would I, mean? agree. I agree. It shouldn't take us longer than a week to go through whatever applications we have. Okay. Okay. So then, okay. So then there is just one small change I have to make in the Slack. Just, I had put that they have to apply to Google, but I guess there's no... They just apply to us. Yeah, I don't see any evidence of any more thing that they really apply to us. They we are taken that using the suggested in statement of interest that follow. I mean, I, I think we suggest they follow this statement of interest form um, in their application to us. That way, we have some consistency. But I don't I don't think there's any other restrictions slash guidelines. And there's not there's there's no I mean I've found no evidence and it looks they do say that you know we give them a profile and we select them, so it doesn't sound like um yeah. Okay, so let me share my screen for a second. You bet. Okay, so right now in Slack, uh -huh. this is what I have for students. Be sure to follow our community specific tasks, yep. which like Elizabeth, <clears throat> yep. Ryan, Sean, Kevin. Yep. As you prepare your proposal, you can simply use the template from Google. So, so I, I assume it's that same link. 
it's a creating a statement of interest. I just yep, yep, yep. Project okay. statement. Mm -hmm. Any specific things from the group? Yep. So I'm okay. And then, um, uh, and then add there. their add their application to our interest table. Yep. And then I say the deadline is the fourth for us. And then I also say, please ask your, if you, if anybody receives questions via DM, yeah. can you encourage them to re-ask the question in this channel? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yep. Uh, very okay. good. Very good. We should be ready for volume. Yeah, it seems lighter than the other two, I'll be honest yeah. with you. Uh, I think it's it's a little later, and maybe that's um, to our. Uh, and I, I, th I think oh, I think our re Google season of docs is widely. I mean, sorry, Google season of Google summer of code is really well established and well known, and lots and lots of students that like pass it on at universities and outreach is similar in terms of its. I mean, outreach did something with publicity this year that really made things much bigger. But I think Season of Docs is maybe a less well understood or recognized program to guess. Because like if I was an outreachy student, I don't know why I wouldn't apply to Google Season of Docs. Okay. All right. So I think we have that item covered. Um, project badging meetings, Elizabeth. I just wanted to mention, um, so at the DEI event badging meeting we had this morning, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> we were hoping to start, so we're gonna be alternating, mm -hmm. it's gonna turn into a weekly meeting, but we'll alternate project event, project event. Um, we're looking for a time that does not conflict with anything else at chaos. So that meeting will change. Um, but we're hoping to kind of kick these off after the event appreciation event, after the badging appreciation event in on right. June 16th. So um, I just want to bring that to this group because I know that there are people in this group that also want to um, work on this um, project badging um initiative so right. um i just want to make sure that that was okay that it's not going to conflict with anything like that we're all kind of on the same page so for for weekly what time are you proposing we don't know yet um oh, okay I, all right. I have a task to get some blocks and then we'll see what kind of works with the group um but right now that meeting conflicts with the asia pacific meeting on the off weeks so that's right. why we find a an open block yeah i mean I, whatever we can find out what works for the people who are most active on that and i would say direct it from there around the other chaos meetings um, if 9 a.m would work every other every wednesday then i think that's open yes maybe it's, but that's just, just sort of the obvious suggestion and captain obvious sometimes um, Matt G, does that kind of align with like what your take is on the all in stuff and like what's what, what do you in feel like of, about that? in terms of timing, timing, structure, whatever, like are those meetings something that you would be interested in attending or like what? What's well, your I, yeah, definitely. Yeah, 100%. And that works. And, and I plan to come to them too. Um, so, yeah, yeah so. That, that does work for me. Um, and with the semester ending, that'll be good. Cause I, I did have a meeting that would appear at nine o'clock before this one often, but that won't be the case from this point forward. Yeah. Nine o'clock. Central. Okay. Yeah. Let me just jot that down. And then, um, again, this won't start until j the end of June. So perfect. yeah, that's perfect. Um, okay, cool. Awesome. That was all. All right. And this uh, this next item was left from the last time. Do, do we want to spend uh, 
10 to 15 minutes on this or do folks feel like you got finished with it last time? I think uh, there are a lot of edits. <laughs> I think Christy was going to take a look at the edits. Okay. And try to consolidate some of them, if I remember correctly. Is that right, Elizabeth? Do you remember that? Yeah, I think that was the plan. Okay, so we don't have to take a look at it. All right, uh, open issues. Don't know if we have any, but we do have some. <clears throat> we have uh, several open by Matt German for eight, eight days ago. Uh, are these ones that you want to review? Uh, well, it's part of what we need to do this for round. The, uh, these okay. are some metrics that need revision. Yeah, okay. And so I had just gone through and started to identify things that I think we need attention. And these are just proposals. I mean, a group could take a look at this list of things and say, not, not really. Um, I think we should go through them if I mean, nobody objects. We could. I mean, another oh, okay. maybe another another workflow would be like I had put this out here yeah. as these like whatever seven items. Yeah, and we could, we could just have maybe a volunteer take a look and see if they agree with those seven items like we don't have to some of them don't yeah. require like all, all of us all, just yeah, like, they don't require collective effort they just require no someone. they're like yeah. the name needs to be updated or the the listings are kind of like not formatted really well okay. you know what i mean yeah and so it might be useful if we could have maybe some volunteers just somebody who isn't the originator of the issue kind of make some updates or just kind of attend to the updates. So like when Elizabeth puts hers into evolution, like I could be the person, you know what I mean? We just have two sets of, of people taking a look at it. Yeah. Two sets of guys. Right. And then for that second person, if there's, there is a fundamental change, you know, like uh, the maybe. objective needs to be rewritten or something like that. Yeah. Then maybe we bring it back to the committee or to the working group and say, okay, Folks, let's all take a take a run at this. So, if someone takes a run at this one, uh, for example, um, so right. So, for example, yeah, in this one, there are two questions that I had. Like, how is network bandwidth part of time inclusion for virtual events, and how is low bandwidth part okay. of this metric? Right. So, like, those are kind of bigger questions that maybe we would answer as a group. Yeah, but updating the Likert scale that takes two seconds. Yeah, I I do remember the network bandwidth question arose from people in low bandwidth situations, so perhaps hmm, these are redundant. It was my first impression. Hmm. So, do we want to maybe assign some of these to people, <clears throat> like give yeah. these? To assignees would anybody like to take a look at the revision comments on any of these metrics you could assign yourself go, go into yeah. the yeah issues. you could go in like um event demographics family friendliness code of conduct so like if i went into family friendliness and i i wanted to okay i'll say you know, with this one i would click assign yourself and then that person would be responsible so we could just ask people to volunteer um so what is the tag on there i forgot like uh, revising metric mm -hmm. um for some reason my my ability to type there
Yes. That, that, you know, I just volunteered for one and others could just go in and volunteer for them. And we could see how a few weeks of prompting folks for volunteering goes. Yeah, that'd be great. And I, you know, these are really, some of them are really, really pretty, pretty easy ways to, to help out in the project. So, yeah. And that the, the reviews look very thoughtful. Thank you, Matt. Mm -hmm. Uh, just a question um for the review process are we looking at just the revisiting metrics or some of the older ideas or was it a specific oh. subset of metrics we were looking at all i was proposing it for this was the revision of the metrics it could include more but m mine was just on those top four so i think the answer it, the idea is that there are individuals who are reviewing different working group metrics for items like those that are in in here and then creating issues for them follow and then including this checklist uh, in the issue and you could tag all of the metrics if you you know in a working group if you think they all require some kind of minor revision or major revision or you could as matt's done here identify the ones that actually or requires you know some attention for sure but not force a revisitation of every single thing just because we're doing it but i mean that's yeah so we, it. yeah we have we have actually assigned people to each working group so like i'm taking a look at the doing a first pass on the dei metrics elizabeth was doing a first pass on the evolution metrics sean i think you were Common. taking a first taking a first so so the original issue should come from really just five people so that that's our first hope so like i think elizabeth you have done this in the evolution working group and so only only once the issue is created are we looking for kind of that review of the review essentially kind of like a, a meta review yeah the, and the meta review could, I think, essentially, if the process and the, 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 the updating is straightforward, one could edit the markdown and issue a pull request that we could review. If there's significant revision required, where like this, lots of language needs to be adapted, I think there is a point at which someone might decide that we should create a Google Doc and do a bunch of editing and then make the pull request it's like if there's a major major revision required i think that would be probably the process we would end up following there is that what you have in mind matt yep and as justin points out these are this is a really a good way i think for newcomers to get involved and yep. i i was typing i i agree but i'll just say it i agree okay <clears throat> Yeah, in fact, um, we could put this on our chaos organization page with a list of the working groups where people could be looking for issues tagged like this or put it in the newcomer document or whatever if we haven't done that. Yeah, I'm thinking, Elizabeth, maybe we could announce this in like the, I don't know what your thoughts are, like on the newcomer channel. I mean, I can do it too, but, you know. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Cool. All right, I, I think that uh, other, I don't think there's anything else that we need to discuss for issues, unless there are older issues that we think we need to give attention to for any reason. At this point, a lot of these are metric ideas from, from the Wayback Machine. Um, I'm wondering if we should tag those four metrics as good first issues for the revisiting metrics. That's a good idea. Yeah, we could. It's a good idea. I won't go through it while we're in the meeting right now, but because that would be kind of boring to watch. But I think it's a good idea. I can take a quick to do to add those tags out right after this meeting. I just tagged them. I got it. Oh. Oh. 
Don't worry. <laughs> Suggest the idea and then blammo, it's done. Well, thank you, Justin. Thank you very much. It's cool how I hit refresh and just all the oh, work was completed. I, maybe we can do that with other things. <laughs> all right. Um, the next topic uh, that, again, I pulled from last week and I just kind of called the people who were here last week. Are there further points of discussion regarding our code of conduct? I know um, part of our uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion advisory board had a discussion about code of conduct earlier this week. So I don't know if uh, we want to talk about this or read through it. What if that, if we accomplish Fundamentally, our... hold on, the code of conduct for public spaces. Stop. Scope. Okay. I'm looking at scope. Yep, yep. <clears throat> So I just, I think the recommendations that we got is just, we need to go through the code of conduct to make sure that it's explicit, that this applies to events as well. It does say all of our public spaces, project mm -hmm. spaces and public spaces. Yeah, the, I guess- so if... We might just wanna add a comment about events. Okay. Oh, it does say it too. Okay. Or acting as an appointed representative at an online or offline event. Hmm. That's a little strange to me. I, th I think it, it I, I, I know we grab, I know part of this is derived from some templates and their modification. The way I think about that is if one of us, for example, is presenting at OSS Summit North America, there could be you know, uh, complaint filed against us with that conference, but there could also be a complaint filed inside the project and those processes might co-occur like there may. I think it, I think it's about being able to have uh, remediation for violations of acceptable behavior. Um, on be you know, and at the same time, representing chaos in a public venue um, that that we want to have of that stated. You know, one of the things I don't like in this, just looking at this, is that it talks about representing or acting as an appointed representative. Uh -huh. <laughs> that seems like a funny restricted scope. I mean, mm -hmm. if we're having a chaos kind of event and somebody's not being nice at the event, <laughs> the code yeah. of conduct still applies to them. Yeah. Even though they're an appointed representative of the chaos project. So we may want to take a look at this. Um, maybe we could give an action item and maybe we could talk about it a little bit next time. All right. Me, everybody to give this a read, if you wouldn't mind. Okay. What does the top say? Um, hang on. Our pledge. Okay. Yeah, I think scope needs to be, I don't know what other people think, and, and our responsibility. Project maintainers are responsible for clarifying the standards of acceptable behavior. We might want to take a look at those two. Okay. Both of those responsibilities and scope. I don't know what other people's thoughts are. They seem a little narrow to me. They Yeah, Justin. Yeah. Sorry, I have a lot of background noise. Um, but I was looking at two other projects that recently have been doing a lot of code of conduct work that have both the digital and in-person spaces. And I think the Fedora project and the Sustain OSS community are also yep. maybe some good examples to look at for how they've approached it. Um, but I was also just trying to get more context. I missed, is the question just a review of our current code of conduct or are there specific things we're, we're looking at more closely related to it? Yeah, the um, the recommendation that kind of came was essentially to ensure that we don't have two codes of conduct, like one for events and one for project, so and that we don't, do we? Um, we have in oh, the past. Okay. Okay. So, um, and just to ensure that our single code of conduct is very clear as to what is covered by our code of conduct. So like chaos meetups, chaos cons, 
like it just everything that goes in here because the argument is is that you know bad behavior is bad behavior it doesn't matter where it occurs and so we don't need to say it twice we want to provide an inclusive welcoming environment except for rude exclusionary harassing people well that's where i think this needs to be updated justin yeah. do you have a comment that makes sense um so i'll add links to the fedora and sustain oss uh oh, code of context in the doc the one thing i think is just to highlight that i think was was really nice is that both of them also have a clarifying uh clarifying notes and statements or an faq that go along with it so kind of like with a legal document or a license it's just a helpful way to clarify the intent and meaning of the code of conduct as kind of another layer on top of what's what's written as the policy, um, mm -hmm. so I'll share those links in the in the doc really quick for the, for the yeah links. those kinds of things I think would become very helpful in the event of a, an enforcement action needing to be adjudicated or processed or whatever the right word is. Can you scroll down a little bit? Yeah. See, again, it's like project maintainers who don't follow or enforce the code of conduct. Like, we, th that language is a little bit off to me. I think, um, so the, yeah, I think it's a little, a little bit off because what's, what's I think missing is the explicit inclusion of contributors. Um, you know, basically anybody participating in the project is expected to follow our code of conduct. We're, we're, and that's the part that I think is not very clear. Like if you're just when you're participating with chaos, the code of conduct is something you need to follow. Period. I, I do think with the project maintainers, um, I think failure to enforce if if you have a leadership role in the project, you know, like if I observe hostile or harassing behavior in a working group and I say nothing and nobody else reports it like evolution where I'm usually there I feel like as a, I, that would be a, a it would be wrong on my part to not request an enforcement action when one obviously should be requested or, or filed and I shouldn't rely on you know, I shouldn't sit back and not take responsibility for engaging this process i think that's what that project maintainer piece is where i think there's enough narrative history in open source where the maintainer had a history of simply taking no action when there were violations and then that that really becomes a culture in the project which is not the culture we want so like i'm not against the maintainer language but i also think what but i think we're missing the i think we're missing clarity around contributors like all participants are subject to the code of conduct i don't think that part's clear enough okay so is that a an enforcement like i kind of lost it oh well i mean yeah so that's a good question is it enforcement like i th i think <clears throat> that yeah this might not belong here this might be an expectation up above but I, I just think it's saying there's a high there is an expectation that if you're a maintainer of one of our repos that you will you know make a <clears throat> you know file a complaint if if there's action that you won't rely on the affected parties you know if you be, if you're aware of it if you're in the meeting if you're in the discussion and something happens you have some uh, maintainers have some responsibility to report that stuff Okay, so yeah, my, maybe, yeah. maybe what I can do is um, I'll move this to a Google Doc. Okay. So that we can <clears throat> maybe edit as a group. Justin's probably already done that, but yeah, you could do it too. Wow. Well, um, and I'll add it. And the hope is that we can next week we could take a look at it um, okay. based on some of the the templates that Justin has proposed. Yep. 
um, and just kind of think through the language of this. So, and I think uh, it was uh, it was basically these three sections that were the the ones that were we discussed specifically. That's yeah, that's my feeling. But of course, I, <clears throat> I agree. I think Um, okay. I'll fix the fonts in here. <clears throat> All right, so I think uh, so the plan is uh, basically the, the plan plan <clears throat> make a Google Doc and edit during meeting on May 3rd, first is Sunday, 4th. Yep. All right. Did you just create that doc, Matt? Yep. Okay. Um, and then I just wanted to, <clears throat> I realized that did, we didn't say anything about it ahead of time, but uh, Chaos partnered with RISA, which is a research software association, uh, and the organizations that are focused on research software engineering as a role and discipline in academic settings. Um, on a workshop in Lorentz in the Netherlands, <clears throat> whose, whose subject was um, recentering open source scientific software around diversity, equity, and inclusion. And it was a four day workshop with 25 local and 35 remote participants. There, we're still going through the process of trying to understand why, but our remote or virtual participants felt very engaged. Um, we got a lot of really positive feedback on how engaged the remote participants felt, and we had very consistent like engagement. People were online the whole day, every day. And I think what's notable is after after four days of discussing this, the the really I think a pretty deep understanding uh, of what we need, what this group meant, or, or interpret how they interpret the idea of recentering open source software around diversity, equity, and inclusion <clears throat> is really sort of a, a, a process of understanding that building a sustainable open source project requires a community around it. And we have some knowledge and empirical evidence that more diverse communities are more successful, better functioning, more, more fun to be part of. And so <clears throat> diversity, making diversity, equity, and inclusion the center of organizing open source scientific projects in this case, and making that part of the mission of the research software engineering role as it's evolving <clears throat> is really about recognizing the significance and centrality of diversity to community and, and centering the whole project around not just the code. And one of the remote participants, um, summarize this is I think one of the things that we do in scientific open source is we sort of fetishize the software that it, that this focus on code as law is not really how open source is successful um, and some of the most successful open source projects do have their community at the center and uh, so the actions moving forward will hopefully include inclusion of some new chaos metrics related to those goals, but also the adoption of that philosophy by the participants of the workshop. I think I think the message that has emerged from this working group and from the advisory group about recentering open source around diversity, equity, inclusion, ultimately 
I mean, it ended up resonating well and being well understood um, by the group. And it's the first large meeting I've been in where there was a lot of shared clarity around <clears throat> what motivates that. And I'll share a more detailed report this week and Elizabeth will publish a version of that in the note in the newsletter. But I just got back late Saturday, so I'm I'm still recovering from the jet lag. I haven't written that up yet. Sounds good. All right. So um and then Elizabeth, she code Africa. You're you're not as time constrained as you were in the general meeting. So <laughs> Yeah, I just uh, things are going really, really well. Precious A and Midi are powering through. Um, they already have a working demo for us. Awesome. Um, we are meeting. I know we are meeting next week. Um, when I say we, I mean the mentors of the program. So um, myself and Ruth and Matt uh, C. We are meeting on Wednesday, and they're going to walk through their demo with us. Um, they're, <laughs> they're doing great. And um, it's been really interesting because we didn't start out with two participants. We only started out with one, but they had such great, strong um, candidates that they sent us two. And it's been awesome because they can, um, we gave them admin permissions on their own repo to work. So they've been merging each other's PRs and reviewing each other's code, which oh, has been great. a really great partnership. Yeah, so they are getting experience on both ends of that process. That's so awesome. that's been great. Um, the, my only my only struggle is um, that we don't have all the documentation ready yet for them <laughs> to, to point to. So the things that they're pointing to will probably change as we go through our Google season of docs and our knowledge base stuff that we're working on this summer. So um, that that part <laughs> is a work in progress, but the bot will be ready to go. And from what I understand, it can also be a little interactive. So um, the the newcomer person, whoever they are, can have a kind of a conversation with that Slack bot and ask questions. And um, they can the bot can dig a little deeper. Uh, oh, nice. As far as I understand, I don't know if we're there yet. As far as the the way it's uh, the demo will show that yet, but as far as are I understand, they, that's, a, that's something we can do. So that's great. So are they using like Amazon Lambda, or how are they doing the conversational part? Yeah, that's a great question. <laughs> okay, I'll just be curious. I'll ask whenever they. I, I, I'm I'm hoping for a demo um, from them in some context. Maybe this working group, or perhaps the general meeting. We, yeah, we sure. give them 10 minutes to just show off the product when they feel that they're ready. That they're ready. Yeah, um, definitely. For sure. Um, I They have touched on it. So Matt C has been hmm. super instrumental in helping them on the technology hmm. side. He's great um, about and, that. Yeah. Yeah. So they've, they've been, um, I get bits and pieces in the, in the, she, there is a she code Africa Slack channel for anybody who wants. Okay. Bye Matt. Um, who, for anybody who wants to join uh, and, and watch their progress. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's um, it's been great. And I'm really, really, really proud of them. Um, they're just, they're amazing. So that's all. Is there, is there a repository that they're using? There is. Um, it is, I think we just called it. So it's in the chaos org. It's the okay. chaos I'll, slack bot, chaos okay. dash slack dash bot for now. How about that? I'll just put that link in here in case Perfect. anybody wants to. Well, yep. that's, that was the wrong document to open. <laughs> yep, that's it. All right. Those are the items I have on the agenda. We have two minutes. Are there any things that anyone else wants to discuss with the time we have remaining? Is there anyone that wants to volunteer to facilitate next time? I'm happy to do it again if there are no other volunteers. I can do a couple in a row. I'm also happy to cede facilitation to others. <clears throat> Tell you what, I'll take it. And if somebody wants to take it instead, they can just fill this out and change it. I think that's it. Thank you, everybody. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone.